Hey Data Factory fans, this is Daniel Perlovsky here, and I'm going to talk to you about the new collect function that we have in mapping data flows. Now collect is a function that is an aggregation function, meaning it exists in the aggregate, window, and pivot transformations. And what it does is it takes all of the values that you've specified in your group by columns and puts them into an array. Now, these could be strings, these could be integers, these could be complex types, and these also could contain null values. Now, the data that I'm going to be working with throughout this demo is basketball reference data that shows each player and what teams that they were on in the 2019 season, along with their position and a wide variety of different counting stats. So going into data preview, you could see we have a list of players. We have columns such as their position, their age, what team they're on, how many games they've played, um, games started, points scored, and a bunch of other different basketball sort of specific metrics that aren't really relevant for this demo. Now, to use collect, you have to add, I guess I said earlier, a pivot, an aggregate, or a window transformation but we're gonna use the aggregate transformation here. Now, for those a little new, new to the product, the aggregation transformation allows you to specify groups for you to combine data into singular rows for those different groups. So you could use this to get the sum of data, the number of rows in a group, and each group will essentially have a bunch of different columns and provide one unique row for each sort of permutation of those specific columns. So let's call this output stream collect players by team. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna group by the team column that we had before. And for every team that we have in our data set, we're gonna have a list of players on that team. So to get a list of players using the IntelliSense we have in the Mapping Data Flow Expression Builder, you just type in collect, and first let's just reference the column players. So going to data preview, which I turned on earlier today, let's sort of see what that data looks like. Um, and going into the inspect, we could see what the metadata of sort of our output is going to be like. As you can see, we are going to output two columns in our data stream, as the aggregate transformation only outputs the group by columns that you specified and the aggregation columns. We're going to have one column for team, and there's going to be one row for each individual team that we have, along with the list of players that played on that team in the 2019 season. So going into data preview, here you can see we have all these unique team columns, and you could then get the list of players as part of a string array. So on the Oklahoma City Thunder, we have Alex Sabrinas, Steven Adams, alongside the 15 to, it looks like 18 players that played on that team during that season. Now, here we just referenced a singular column, but the collect transformation could actually reference a wide variety of values. So say we append the player's position to the aggregate column. Now we're actually going to generate an array of still string values, but values that are derived from two different columns of the source data. Let's refresh our data preview to see what that looks like. And as you can see here, we still have similar metadata, but now we also are relying on position. And once we go to the data preview and see the output values, we're actually going to see that the strings included change. So let's let this load for a second. Shouldn't take too long from here. Great. So going back to Oklahoma City, now we can see Alex Sabrinas was a shooting guard. Steven Adams was a center. And going down the line, you can see now each value has the position appended in front. Now, something else you could do, and this might be common for people coming from maybe t Suite that are familiar with the uh, string ag function, which will, instead of outputting an array of values, this will actually output 
a comma delimited string. Now to do that, it's going to be very similar to what we had before. So let's clone this transformation. Instead of list of players, let's call it um, a string of players. And what you want to do is you're going to wrap this collect function with the higher order reduce function that uh, we have to really append array values. And from an accumulator and an item, you're going to be able to actually um, combine the array values using different rules. So to do this, first let's uh, convert the array to a string. And within that conversion, we're going to enter this reduce function. Now the reduce function takes in for four different parameters. The first is the array, which we already have here, which is generated by the collect function. The initial value of the accumulator, which we're going to just do an empty string. Um, what you want each accumulation to be like. So going row, uh, value by value, how you want those values to sort of relate to each other. So how you want those to be concatenated. Using the item syntax, we're going to take the current item plus a comma. And we're going to add that to whatever is existing in the accumulator. And then we're going to output it all as a result. See if this compiles here. We might need another paren. Cool. It looks like it passed validation. Let's save and finish and go back into our data preview. There we go. So now instead of having this list of players be an array, we have it as a string. And again, it's very long to see in data preview, but you can see this is actually in a reverse order because uh, we started with the existing item for first. So every new item will be put at the front. So we have Russell Westbrook first and Alex Sabrinas over there at the end. Now this um, new collect function can also be used with the existing flatten transformation that we introduced a couple months ago. So what collect does is collect takes a bunch of different groups and puts it, or a bunch of different row values and puts it into an array. You could use flatten to actually take that list of players and expand that out. Um, so we could get an individual row for each player again, instead of having it all combined into a singular row. So all I had to do was specify my unroll root which is going to be that list of players. And this flattened transformation is going to create a row for each player that was in each array alongside with their team. Um, we're going to just call it player name is what each value is going to turn into. And we could actually even keep that existing string of players that we had in our aggregate transformation. So let's look at that. And going to inspect, you'll also notice now we just have three different strings instead of um, a, a string array. And if you want those existing values as before, you could always do a self-join to with the original data. So here we could see now we have an individual row for each player alongside their position as we had before. So this is sort of fl uh, collect collapses your data into less rows, whereas Flatten is going to expand it into more rows. Hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoy using this function. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you so much.